Why should you learn more about radical honesty? I'm Kathy Bertilli from TheIntimacyDojo.com, and I'm here with John Rosanio. From, he's the CEO of Radical Honesty Enterprises, and he's also the founder of Honesty Lab. Um, and he and Lindsay Antoine will be here in the end of August, August 23rd, 24th, and 25th, running a workshop. And John, why should people learn more? Why would, why would you suggest people show up? How would they know if this is for them? That is a good question. How would they know? Well, probably the first thing I'd just say with that is if there's, if you hear the words radical honesty, and then there's something in your body that goes, whoa, what is that? Or what's interesting about that? Mm -hmm. That might be a first sign that there's something about, like when I got introduced to all this stuff, I asked myself the question, huh, if I was totally honest in my life, how different would my life be right now? from how I imagine it to be. Yeah. And at that time I was like, holy shit, like my life would be totally different. So I just recognized that I was kind of a phony. I was scared, I was performing. And so there was something about this practice of like, what would it be like to be a little more honest than I normally am in an environment that is this consensual place where adults say, hey, we're gonna try on being a little more honest with each other to see what happens. Yeah. So I think, you know, if you're interested in this, all this kind of personal growth stuff and getting over your past, learning what it's like to be continuously moment to moment honest with others yeah. and also using that to construct some kind of future that inspires you. I feel like this is the kind of work um, to come and check out and see what it's like. Yeah, I've been working with you for a couple of months now doing the sessions. Mm -hmm. And I always considered myself quite an honest person. Like I really go out of my way to try to be honest. And I noticed since I've been working with you, a lot of little ways I try to control people's perception of me that I don't, I'm not doing now. And they're silly. They just took a lot of energy where I would like try to phrase things away to try to give, to give them the impression that I was a little more important or a little more hardworking or whatever. And uh, my brother was just here this, oh, we haven't, I haven't seen him in a bunch of years. He's a lot younger than me. And he and my sister-in-law were here. And I just noticed I was being just really factual about things and not trying to control things. And there was a lot more intimacy um, and a lot less struggle to remember how did I phrase that or what did I say that I got to kind of um, emphasize that. So it was really, it was a really lovely time. And I, I just was like, oh, the work I've been doing with John is really paying off. Nice. Yeah, I think there's a real practical side of it, yeah. which is just like, what are the ways that we communicate with others and if we're interested in connection, there's some way that revealing ourselves more tends to create more connection eventually. Sometimes yeah. if we have a stuff bubbling up that we have to get over, we have to go through that process of getting it over, getting over it with the person. But in the end, there is this kind of clarity that comes. So I do think that radical honesty has a lot to do with like communication tools. Mm -hmm. It's a way that you can have deeper conversations. Yeah. But then, but big picture, I really think that like radical honesty really is a meta skill practice. Yeah. So whereas other form of workshops and all might give you specific things to do with people, really the practice of radical honesty is um, developing the capacity to be more and more with your experience, to fully experience your experience so that it can come and go. And so part of the ways that we keep our experience from coming and going, that is living in our patterns, our behavioral tics, our conditioning from the past, um, has to do with one of the big ways is lying. And we talk about lying mostly in the forms of withholding. So the ways that we withhold ourselves from others is the way that we continue creating more and more stress in our life. So the whole kind of thing about radical honesty is when there's more revealing in a safe environment, when there's more revealing there, you tend to bring more awareness to whatever these behavioral patterns are so that you can be with them so that they can come and go more often. And the trick is that so many other practices tend to give you tools that you then beat yourself up for if you don't do them right. right. So the meta practice of, can I be with my experience to allow it to come and go? There's no tool trick in there. Yeah. So we're trying to get out of the domain of, this is gonna make me better, this is gonna make me a better person, da, 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 da. that whole way the mind jumps in. So it's a pretty deep practice, but on the one hand, it's communication tools, let's say, so you can clean up your relationships. But on the other hand, it's this deeper practice of awareness, which I find that the rigor we bring to the communication mm -hmm. is 
huge. And I think um, I like, I like also, one of the things I have noticed about people who come to radical honesty stuff, they're usually people who have done a ton of work already. And there's still something that's not quite been expressed, or there's some way of being that feels a little bit like I'm holding back or a little bit phony. Yeah. So I love people who have been through the personal growth circuit yeah. and are sort of over it all and then come to a Radical Odyssey workshop. I, I generally find that they get a lot out of it. So personal growth junkies, this is home for you. <laughs> <laughs> So I have a question for you. Like I haven't experienced this, but I, I can imagine in people's heads, I've been to Landmark and other things where people sometimes use radical honesty as an excuse to bludgeon each other. To like, po like it gives me free permission to tell you everything that you're doing wrong about your life and how you should improve it. Is that what you're going to do this week, the weekend when you're here? Well, we don't exclude. So we don't exclude you sharing your judgments with people, but in general, Radical honesty, when we think of honesty in popular culture and all, honesty usually just means me sharing my endless opinions with you. <laughs> and that's okay. Some, you know, we can have conversations about opinions, but really radical honesty is much broader than that. It's much more about what you notice in your environment. We say it this way, there's only three things you can be honest about. You can be honest about what you notice in the environment in this moment. You can notice what sensations are happening through your body in this moment, and you can notice your endless thought stream. So most of the time we think about honesty, all we think about is the thought stream. But in fact, the thought stream is usually the thing that keeps us in disconnection from other people. It's much more about this feeling relationship and sharing that ongoingly. So basically, what I would say is we open up what honesty is to such an extent that you probably will not be that interested in sharing your endless mind poop opinions over <laughs> and over again because in fact it doesn't really matter and it'll be you can clarify when you want to have a conversation about ideas and when you actually want to have a conversation about relating between people yeah. so like i said we don't have rules in the sense that we exclude you from that but i probably will when you're saying that usually when people want to share their judgments they're angry yeah and so they're not cool-headed anymore we actually think cool-headed is a good thing it means that when you're sharing your intellectual ideas, you're not charged up. So if you start sharing your judgments and you're charged up, we'll slow you down. We'll help you clear the emotional content. And then you're welcome to have a conversation about, hey, I think this would be nice or I think this would be nice. But most people collapse all of those things together. And that's where all this disconnection generally comes about. Yeah. So I we, we welcome you to share your judgments, but we are going to work with you to go much deeper than just sharing the endless judgments that your mind creates. Yeah, one of the things I've noticed with working with you is <clears throat> there are people I was really close to that I really care about, but we've kind of gotten in a certain rut, a certain pattern where we always, we, we just keep playing the same story over and over again and going in and noticing what I'm feeling and sharing honestly with that person and giving them space to share back. It really broke, like there, it's not the same like, oh, here we go again. It's like, who is this person as a new, new person? It was really very empowering. I've really enjoyed that. Yeah, the thing, Radical Honesty, like that name, really when we're talking about that, like it's, it goes back to this thing. Honesty, we really think of as just opinions. So then yeah. people see someone like Donald Trump and think, oh, this guy's really honest. What's nice about him is that at least he reveals what his thoughts are and they seem to change all the time. So in the end, it's sort of like big fucking deal. Yeah. But in terms of this thing, when we see him, we also think, oh, there is something incongruent about his whole way of being. Yeah. So that's the whole thing. Part of this work is getting into being congruent in sharing what's going on. And so many other modalities work with this, right? Landmark is great, all these other ones. But, other, but we have a particular way of doing it. And we bring a particular rigor to being able to descriptively share what's going on. And that in the end to me is what radical honesty is. Like radical honesty, there's actually no content to it. Radical honesty is just you revealing yourself, but your, your level of skillfulness and being able to share what's actually going on with you is tricky. How well can you distinguish between what you imagine and what you actually notice in the environment? Mm -hmm. How well can you distinguish what sensations are happening in your body from all of your thought stream? What are your emotions? They include both intellectual content and also sensations. Can you differentiate those? So basically, radical honesty to me really is an awareness practice. 
Yeah. It's a deep awareness practice. But the difference is most awareness practices are singular. It's like sit on your cushion and meditate or think about mm -hmm. or reflect. This is an out loud meditation practice that you do with other people. And we're pretty good about handling whatever stuff bubbles up in the room. I love how you, you, you bring insights that I, and help me look at things that I had in a way I hadn't looked at them before. And I love that. And it's perfect for the, the intimacy dojo is about a place to practice and play at intimacy. So actually being engaged with other people and doing that rather than reading a book and thinking we know how to do it. So, um, and I, I really noticed like I never thought I was an angry person, but I was really just pushing it down and working with you. I'm like, Oh, I am angry. I'm being passive aggressive. And it's just been so much cleaner to work with people. So I will be taking part in the workshop. I will be one of the attendees and I'm excited about that. Um, and it's August 23rd through 25th. Um, and the link is below if you want to sign up. John, anything you want to add or encouraging thoughts for people to show up? Yeah, um, it's so fun. And there are very few spaces where adults can get together and say, hey, we're going to play around with me being a little bit more honest with you, giving you feedback, experiencing feedback in ways that are different than how we normally run our ongoing lives. It's so cool. I love creating these kinds of spaces. And for people who are interested, especially in things of intimacy and play, sexuality, all these things, being able to be clear and descriptive in what your experience is really helps you um, create all these things that are talked about, I think, often in your community about boundaries, asking for what you want. So it's, a, it's such a benefit to, if you're in those communities, to have these skills. And we do a lot with asking for what you want. That's a huge part of this. And we have, a, we have an interesting way of looking at boundaries that might be a little bit different and might be more connective and be able for you to really negotiate moment to moment what you like. I like how that feels. I don't like how that feels. So if you uh, have watched the Intimacy Dojo, which I imagine some of you have, I think you'll find this interesting and a kind of a live and exciting way to work. Yeah. I hope you show up. If you have questions, feel free to hit reply to this email or to the Kathy at the Intimacy .com if you're watching this on YouTube. And John, I can't wait to see you in a few weeks. All right. I'll see you soon.